Hey guys, Jack, hey, how are you? Patrick, all good? Good, excellent. Hey, I don't want to put any pressure on you guys, but so far this year, since we started the show, all the guests have been the champions so far. So hey, the pressure is on you guys now, huh? <laughs> yeah, but you there's two of us. <laughs> yeah, so you can choose. You can choose. Okay. Who's going to be the champion? <laughs> Hey, uh, first of all, we always start by introducing the drivers. You're both drivers. So uh, I start off with Jack. I think you don't need an introduction. Huh? Formula One champion. Uh, you were the IndyCar champion. You won the Indy 500. So everybody knows that. But before that, what did you do? Because you started quite late in racing, right? Yeah, I started at 17 because I was a skier. So I didn't do go-kart. I did skiing instead. Uh, my mother didn't want to be a go-kart mechanic. I guess that. Uh, that was a, the main reason, and I was in boarding school in the mountains, so skiing was the was really the thing, and I found that very helpful to work on lines or on perception, three D spare awareness, and also pushing the limit all the time, uh, and figuring it out by yourself what to do different or not, and also uh, what you normally don't learn when you get into a race car is how how to feel the car and how the car responds to you, but you feel that a lot on skis. Yeah. And uh, that wasn't very useful in in Formula One, but I find it very useful in NASCAR, which is a soft car that moves around and you can drive around the problems. And I, I found skiing to be very useful for that. But in car, I started at 17 uh, directly in Formula Three. And that was okay. a big job. Uh, I was in Italy and we were over 40 cars. And uh, half the races, I wouldn't be qualified for the finals. And uh, I would be one second off pole position and still not qualified for the main shows. <laughs> it was a really tough Tough schools. So that was great. Okay. Yeah. You know, we do some skiing with our team. We, we Every year we take the whole team, all the drivers skiing. So now that you guys have a team, maybe you can take your, your young drivers to ski and you learn them how to ski. Eh? Um, yeah. Uh, after you did uh, uh, your, your single-seater career, you stepped into NASCAR in USA. How did that go? Uh, it was good. It was good fun. Well, I did a little bit of Le Mans uh, just before the NASCAR, uh, but that's just a one one off race, which was fun. Uh, sadly, there was only a second position, which was awful. That's the one race where you don't want to finish second. Uh, NASCAR then was uh, it, it was intricate uh, because when you get into the States and you come from open wheel, you're not American and they make you pay. It's it's. <laughs> So I think in seven races, uh, I was put in the wall seven times. So that was that was really interesting on the ovals. And once you start making your way in there and they start respecting you, then it's fine. You just need to bite the bullet at first, uh, which is great uh, because it's it's old fashioned. You do something to me, I do it back to you. You know, it's like you give me a punch, I give you a punch. OK, and then and then you're happy and you can go and have a beer together. So that uh, that was fun. But uh, the, the initially I did the, the big races like Talladega, you know, Daytona and, and some ovals. Uh, because there, there were only two road courses anyway, so there was no point doing the road courses um, in the first year. So in trucks and nationwide, and well, I, they change name all the time, uh, and in cup as well. Uh, that was fun because those cars are powerful and pack racing, getting used to having a spotter, and you don't even drive with your mirrors almost. It's the spotter that's telling you where everything is. Uh, that, that, that was really amazing. After that, I went to do mainly road courses, and that was amazing. The most fun I had in racing was was nascar on the road course okay cool and then afterwards you did some uh v8 supercars you did some rally cross you did some formula e formula e how did that go e <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh that was something to try and you know if you're a driver just get some pedals and uh, and a steering wheel then you have to beat the opposition that's it so it doesn't matter whether it's electrical diesel like it was in Le Mans or or a, a big V8, or a, a, a high revving F1 engine you, and high downforce, you still have to find a way to make that car go as quickly as possible. And it's very intricate. And formally, it was different because uh, the, the, the way the engine was working and the engine braking that was then creating power, it, it was really weird. And you had to get used to that. And the, some of the tracks were fun. Um, but obviously, it it, it is what it is today, and it will never get. So, you know, a lot of people have said, "Oh, this will replace F1," but it's purely impossible. It's good on small, tiny tracks. As soon as you get on a big track with big straight lines, then then you can see that there's something lacking. <clears throat> and then we go to Patrick. Patrick, you had a, a different career, but at a certain stage, you guys worked together with BRR. 
in Formula One. What did you do before, before you, you stepped into uh, Formula One as a test driver? Well, a lot of things. <laughs> uh, first of all, we met, I met Jack when we were 10 uh, and we, we start um, skiing, slide, sledge and, and a lot of things together. And, and we, we had this respect since we were kids, so that was good. And I started go-kart late as well um, because my parents were not into motor racing. And, um, and so I, I, I convinced my cousin to be my mechanic. And the second year, I was French champion. So, so it was a good start. I did uh, the health school, which is similar to what we do with speed racing now for the young kids. And, and I had uh, the, the, the hard time with, with sponsorship because I was held by Marlboro and we had the, the regulation against uh, cigarettes in Europe. So I had to move to America where I did Formula Atlantic. I came back. I won Bercy in go-kart. So I had a sponsorship to, for the 3000 and I had a chance to, to add a, a test with the Tyrell and, and make my place to, to be our test driver. I met Jack again. Okay. And, uh, I saw you also did Le Mans with the Audi R8. That was a great car in that time. Uh, how did Le Mans go for you? Well, the race didn't go very well because we uh, we had a, a failure after a few hours. But I not only did Le Mans, I did all the championship with Stefan Johansson and I won a European champion ELMS with Stefan and Audi. So it was a very, very good experience. Uh, we won races and we uh, we finished second at the Petit Le Mans as well between the two official Audis. So it was it was a great experience. So I would I would uh, I would uh, I would have fun there to 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 make more years with with Stefan, but we didn't. But it was a great great experience before to move to IndyCar. Yeah, and then I saw when you did Le Mans, you had Tom Cornell with you. He's a good friend of mine. He's a bit of a crazy guy, isn't he? No, he's completely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's a very fun guy, very fun guy, but, and it's fast as well. So it was, it was a very good three drivers for Le Mans, and we had unlucky, but it was a great experience with, with Tom. We had a lot of fun and very competitive on the track, so it was, it was very good memories. You know, he has, a, he has a little pocket in his suit. He made it specially to carry his iPhone, so he can make some footage when he has a crash or whatever. Who thinks about that? But maybe you should get him into NASCAR. We, we have quite a lot of Dutch drivers. The current champion is a Dutch driver. So maybe you should get Tom over into your team, right? Yeah, that would be amazing. Now, Tom is a good fan and he's a great driver as well. But I think he's having fun there. But, uh, but he's, I think he's touching Carl a little bit too much for me. So I think he's, he's better the way he is. Yeah, he, he, he will crash a lot, I think. Eh? He's, yeah. he's very aggressive. Eh? No, but he's doing great. He's driving now in the... WTCR championship with uh, went one of my drivers, so he's doing really well. Um, Jack, you started off in the in the 219 NASCAR Real and Euro Series. How did you get to know the championship? Who pulled you in there? Uh, I had seen the championship a few years uh, before. Then it was just a question of timing because uh, I'm very busy with TV commentary, and that doesn't leave a lot of time to to set uh, racing properly. And also, I have four kids, uh, which takes a lot of time, good time, but <laughs> it makes racing a little bit complicated. Um, it, 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 it got through with a, with a, with a Canadian team uh, with whom I had done some racing in the Rallycross a few years uh, ago, and there were still some races left in the contract. So uh, it was the excuse to, to try out uh, the, the, the category. Uh, the issue we had last year is we didn't really have a team. Um, we had a car and an engineer, and that was it. We didn't have a shop, didn't have a truck. Didn't, so uh, the car would be prepared on Friday morning while everybody else was practicing. So that made the season a little bit complicated, but it was fun. Uh, I really wanted to see how these cars compared to the ones in, in the state, um, see if I could drive them properly. And uh, so then the plan was this year to do something uh, more professional. Yeah, because last year uh, in, in Venya, Ray, you were very close to the win. Uh, you had some really good races. Italy, I remember you were really fast. So uh, so this year the expectations are higher, I guess. Yes, the expectations are high, mostly because we were quick in Valunga. It's just annoying that uh, we didn't get that first win in the first race. That makes a big difference in the in uh, in the championship but yes the car is fast uh definitely it's it's well prepared so i'm very very happy about that i'm just very sad that there's no oval this year because uh that was my favorite last year yeah, yeah, yeah. the ovals 
I, I won many races in Vendray. I think every weekend I went there, I won a race. I even won a race with a backup car from the championship because I crashed my car on Saturday. So, uh, but uh, yeah, we have two little ovals in Europe, right? We need some more ovals. We have to, yeah. to What's find the other one? people. Uh, we have the one in Tour Speedway. And then ah, you have, okay, yeah. yeah, but uh, that's more smaller one. And then, uh, yeah, you have some more ovals, but you know, with our cars, the, the safety is uh, maybe not so easy with, uh, with the, the ovals that we have. So somebody has to build some, we have to find somebody that can build yeah, them. We also need the fans and it's not, oval racing is not really well known in Europe, but the racing was fun there. There was a good, uh, good group of fans last year when we were racing there. So that, that was really interesting also. Uh, they raced in the wet, which I found very interesting. That doesn't happen in the States. Yeah, you know who won the first NASCAR uh, oval race in the wet ever? Uh, I'm sure you have the answer. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's Loda, it's Loda, Matthias Loda. Really? Yeah, oh. he won, uh, I think in 2015, he won an oval race in the wet. We had an oval race and he won it. Okay, so you guys decided to create uh, feet racing. Patrick, how did that come together? How did that idea come up? Well, it became a few things. First, first we had a for a few years with Jack. We we noticed and it was very very hard for talented driver to uh, to show their talent because even go kart is very expensive. So, what is the solution for a kid who has talent to start? It's not a question to be in Formula One or Formula Two. It's just how you're going to start because go kart is very expensive. And I'm I'm coming from those those racing school and we had before and in the 80s in France we there were there were seven 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 school for for young drivers you know to to detect talent so we had this idea to Jack to is we said is it time now to to start again something and we can we can detect talent and give a chance to this kid then they have a little bit money to do the school but not enough money to race and that's why the, the idea of feed racing start Okay, and so uh, if I uh, have it right, the guy who's uh, coming to the school and then does the best feature, he gets a season in, in either Formula 4 or in, uh, in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Well, at, at, at first, it's for Formula 4 because most of the drivers who, who are young and doing go-kart for, for, for the most of them, they, they, they're dreaming about single seater. Uh, so for the moment, the, the, the selections are, uh, and the winner will, will, will get a, a Formula 4 season. But in the future, and in very close future, even next year, we're thinking about having something for NASCAR as well. Okay. And, and the goals of the team, what, what are you guys planning? You want to expand the team, make it bigger? You want to add some more series to it, add some more cars in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series? What are the, the plans that you have? Well, first, there was uh, an excuse to get Patrick into racing after 17 years. So <laughs> that, that took a little bit of convincing. And also, the way the, the way the series is with two drivers in the car, we have a, a junior driver or a B driver. Can, you know, doesn't have to be junior. Um, th there's a good way to, to, to open the seats to some of our students as well, like, uh, like Simo sharing the car with, uh, with Patrick. And also what we've seen is... Um, a lot of the parents or fathers that come with their sons, they want to drive. And suddenly they think, oh, NASCAR could be a good thing. So it could, it could also bring uh, a bunch of drivers to, to NASCAR, not only to, to our team. Um, we're doing this because we love racing. That's the first thing. I love being in the, in the race car. If at the same time uh, we can build the team up uh, with, with good drivers, then that, that's, that's another benefit. Yeah, yeah, and, and the thing is with NASCAR, uh, I experienced myself, I, I started NASCAR very late when I was like 36 years old or 37, I don't remember, but you know, there's still a future, you know, you can still do a good championship here, and if you're young, you can still go to USA, there's still, you know, there's more places in NASCAR, because you have the three national series in USA, there's a lot more places than what we have here, when you go to single seaters, there's only Formula One, and there's 20 seats. Well, I, and, and for for drivers to start uh, or to 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 get a touch of of racing, it's not bad because the cars are big. They're difficult to drive. The races are fun. A lot of drivers, uh, four hundred fifty horsepower. That's not bad. And it's the cheapest European international series out there as well. Uh, the cost for per driver. So so it's a good way to to get in. Uh, and if you manage to drive one of those cars, because they're they're really complicated, it's still a, a, a H pattern gear gear shift from the 60s, uh, and even the way all the suspensions work. 
uh, if you manage to to manhandle those cars, uh, I guess he, then you're fine to drive any anything else. Yeah, Patrick, uh, you didn't race for 17 years. So uh, how did it go the, the first weekend two weeks ago in uh, in Vallelunga? Well, it did it did well. A bit bit a little bit frustrated because you know first of all you said well Jack t took took one year and more to Jack to convince me to race again because I was I wasn't sure I was. Um, I wanted to race and 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 be myself in a uh, in a race weekend, but it's part of the feed program as well because it's not only racing. It's not only I'm not enjoying racing, but to be with with Simon and share the car with him is from feed racing. It's, it's part of the global thing, and I'm I really enjoying everything, the whole project. So the the first race was was exciting, but I thought okay, I'm gonna took it you know cool and relax, but it was impossible, you know. As soon as you're in a car, you want to perform. Uh, I was not happy with my setup, so I was frustrated when qualifying. So I started in the middle of the pack, and was I had two uh, two uh, drive through in the first race because <laughs> I was I was you know I was moving at the start, and I, I, I didn't see my speed in a pit lane, and it was a little bit it was a little bit hard. But um, I had really enjoying myself, and I and 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 I like. I really like the cars. The cars is really fun to drive. is is It's not that easy. Uh, the level, a lot of good drivers, so it's very interesting, and and I really enjoy myself. But I knew then I couldn't take it easy. So now I wanna. I'm, I'm waiting for the next one, and I want to improve. I wanna. I wanna. <laughs> I wanna get better. I wanna win races. So you know, it's. But Jack knew that before. So now nah, it's. it's <laughs> no, but it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. And Jack, yeah, you mentioned before you, you you lost the victory. You were leading by comfortable lead. It's two car lengths. It's nothing, but it's in, in NASCAR. It's comfortable. You you lost it with an electrical failure, if I'm right. Uh, now we go to Zolder. You don't know Zolder that well. I think the first time you raced there was last year. How do you rate your chances for that track? Yeah, it's well, for, first of all, there's a lot of questions on the right in the chat. I have no idea to answer them, so nobody gets upset. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it, the wind, the wind, it, it was under control. I wasn't even pushing in uh, in, in Valenunga in the first race, so I was just keeping the distance and trying not to sweat too much and trying to save the tires for race two. And just a tiny little uh, cable started burning, so with an electrical short. So that that's very frustrating. Zolder, first time last year, I had never been to Zolder actually, and last year was the first time I'd been there since uh, well after my father passed away. So it was a uh, it was quite emotional every time was go would go over the hump uh the car was fun to drive uh the, the track was fun to drive uh, and also we had so much rain last year it, it was amazing that we were actually allowed to race uh, yeah. we're not used to this any, anymore in the modern uh, era of racing so it was slippery it was fun um the way the track drives uh, this year I, I think our chances will be good uh the thing is it won't be hot like Vallelunga uh at all and uh, we were good on the tires so we were good in the heat that's the one question now how good will we be uh, when it's not hot when it's cold will uh, will we manage to heat the tire up enough or will it be better for the other ones who were over heating their tires that, that that's the main uh, that's the main question uh, i have a good setup for zolder i did more laps in zolder than all the tracks in the world combined i think so uh, oh. <laughs> we can we can maybe sort something out good <laughs> alan will not be happy and stinas will not be happy but maybe you know you know Money talks, eh? You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry. Uh, you have to your price, uh, definitely. But it probably will rain, I guess. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of rain. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, so yeah, and then we also have to manage to find a way to get there. That's the that's the big question now. Yeah. Uh, to physically get uh, to to uh, to Belgium and to the track, so it's it's it will be a little bit more complicated to to Valenunga. I guess a few people won't be able to make it, but uh, once we get there, it should, should be fun. Yeah, they they just sent uh, from the championship. If we if we provide a, a COVID test, I think it's something the FIA is doing for all the racing series now. If we provide a COVID test, uh, everybody can come over. So uh, yeah. I think it's the same in all sports and and everything. So uh, it's a bit more difficult, but uh, we try to make the show. Uh, like you mentioned, we have a lot of questions coming in from the fans. So you know, the fans are the most important in NASCAR and all racing. Uh, as we, uh, if we don't have any fans, we cannot go racing. The first one uh, I have to ask is from the previous guest in the show was Ander Villarino, the triple champ. He asked to both of you, obviously, 
Jimmy Johnson or Jeff Gordon and why? <laughs> ah, well, uh, Jeff Gordon is more of my era. And uh, when we started the BAR, he almost joined us as the, as the, the other driver. Uh, I was talking with him at the time and he was just starting NASCAR as well. And uh, BAR, which was BAT basically, was uh, uh, in big part American as well. And uh, so there was a big push to try and get him. We had the long chats and finally, in the end, he opted for NASCAR and he made the right choice. <laughs> uh, you know, in our team, the spotter of Alan Day is the nephew of uh, Jeff Gordon. Oh, yeah. oh that's good. Yeah. Jeff's no, wife is from Belgium. Jimmy Johnson is trying to go to IndyCar, so he's going open wheel. Who is? Jimmy Johnson. He's yeah, just signed yeah, yeah. up and asked you to go. Uh, so it's, that's the yeah, other way yeah. around. That's really interesting. Yeah. I think the, the from NASCAR going to IndyCar is a bit more easy than the other way around because then when you came in in NASCAR, like you said, they just bump you around and that they cannot do it in a IndyCar. Yeah, no, that doesn't happen. And and the NASCAR drivers have become very good on the road course as well uh, over yeah. the years, and they've been adding road courses. So uh, I think you'll do fine. Okay, Patrick, Jimmy well, or Jeff? Well, I will say Jeff because I, I I didn't really follow NASCAR really, but I like his I like his nice mustache. Of Jeff, he had a nice mustache at one time, so I really like it. So I think about it. Eddie, Eddie was really impressive, so he won many times, and um, it was it was is a superhero of NASCAR for sure. Like Jimmy Johnson as well, but I, I like Jeff. I, I like his way of racing. Okay, next one, uh, a question from Frederick Beals. He's asking Jack. Uh, <laughs> oh, I want to know that too. Why do you choose the baggy race suits? Oh, uh, well, I've, I've always worn baggy clothes. It's comfortable. <laughs> it's very simple. It's comfortable. And when you're in the race car, you don't want uh, your suit to pull your shoulders or, or your you know, privates. Uh, it could be very uncomfortable. Uh, and, and also, when it's really hot, it's, it's, uh, you breathe better. And then talking with the, the manufacturers, so the suit manufacturers, the, you know, they've been telling me it's safer. In case of fire, if the, the suit is baggy, if there's some air. Uh, so having a very skin-tight suit is not recommended. That's because you can pee in there. <laughs> that was <laughs> one, uh, yeah. now you, you share the seat with someone in NASCAR, so you can't. <laughs> yeah, and now the races are, are so short, so it's okay. Uh, yeah. it it so much anyway. <laughs> uh, Patrick, uh, uh, Dennis is asking you, what do you rate the most about Chuck? Who? Right. You, about, about Jack. What do you rate the most about him? Mm. Nothing. <laughs> no, there's many things, many things, many things. But I'm not sure I understand the question correctly. Is uh, what, what is the question well, really? What do you rate the most about him? So uh, why do you respect him so much? What's the, the best uh, about his personality or, or about him as a race driver or as a person? Well, the the respect I have for Jack is he started very, 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 very long time ago, when we were a kid. You know, when we are there was no media, no pressure, no Formula One, no nothing. It was just Jack and I doing ski, um, challenging ourselves just for the fun, and 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 we I saw the the the, the value and 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 that's the respect start when we were 10, 12 years, but after, of course, I have a lot of respect for all that Jacks did. And what is, well, there's one point very important in Jack is, he's a real racer. And, you know, when he's, when he's in his bubble, nothing can touch him. And I think when he's under pressure, he's, he's one of the, the best guy in the world. And he proved it because when he was important, uh, he won everything. So that's, I have a lot of respect for that. Okay, cool, man. Um, then uh, another question from Dennis is uh, for both of you. Uh, what's your favorite racetrack? It depends for racing or for qualifying. It's not always the same thing. Some some tracks are amazing on the quali lap. We just get on the limit and you know you've done it like Spa, Suzuka. Uh, those tracks are unbeatable. Or even Monaco. When you do a good lap in Monaco, it's so much fun. Uh, in the States, I would take Elkhart Lake. Yeah. Uh, which is amazing for racing it, it's where you can fight it off the best montreal is amazing for that uh elkhart lake is also good so it serves both purposes where suzuka and spa for racing it, it's not as as interesting um 
I also liked Monaco for racing because it's you have to be concentrated uh, on the edge the whole time, and you get in a little rhythm uh, at some point. And also, you pass by all the bars you go out at night, so that's that makes it a, a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> For me, a very simple answer. It will be the next one and where I will win. <laughs> the next one where you will win. So it's Zolder or what? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and you have like, uh, you, you guys have like a favorite race. It's the same person who was asking it. Do you have a favorite race that you did in the past? Yeah, for me, it was the Petit Le Mans with Audi. Yeah. Uh, it was crazy. It was a crazy race. It was, I think it was 50 cars on this track. And the track is unbelievable, and it was the it was twelve hours of fight with the two official Audis banging the wheels with Johnny Herbert, and it was it was a completely crazy, crazy race, and I have a very, very good souvenir of that one. What year was it? It was two thousand one. I think I was there. I was racing for a Viper America. I was on the podium there. Yeah, I think I was there that year. Yeah. I thought it was two thousand one or two thousand two. And we finished when if we finished second between the two the two officials it was it was very 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 interesting race very, very fun okay and you jack your preferred race oh, i hesitate in between two and obviously they're the ones that gave me the best results so there was harris in 97 for the championship or in the indy 500 but not because of the result because it's easy to say okay win the indy 500 best race now it's because of the way the races happened because at the indy 500 i i, I got two laps taken out early in the race and had to fight back to get those laps. Uh, and it turned into a race where I had to drive aggressively instead of just pacing myself. So that made the race fun. And in the end, it was won uh, by putting pressure uh, on Scott Goodyear, who was leading uh, on a restart. And he would have won the, the race very, very easily and had to make him crack before the restart. And he made a mistake, overtook, overtook the pace car. Uh, if not, I would never have won it. So that was that, that made that race very special and it also made me race in f1 the only reason frank williams took me and and, and bernie nicholson also was interested is because of that win and it's a little bit the same thing in in rs 97 because michael was leading he had the championship one and to go get him uh, i had to take a big risk may, may take a big gamble put him under pressure and it worked so that's why those two races were special okay um then uh, a question from alex he's asking uh, to both of you, if you can add a track to the calendar, which track would it be? A European track, obviously, because we are doing the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Easy. Uh, Manicour. <laughs> <'Cause it's laughs> we have the school there. Uh, yeah. We need a, a race in France, because France is a big part of the, of the racing history. Uh, and it's still uh, a, level, a level one grade uh, Formula One spec track uh, with all the big pit lane pig boxes it's a fun track to drive so that would be a perfect track yeah <laughs> home race, <laughs> home race. Yeah. if i would add one i would add monaco i think these cars around monaco <laughs> that would be so much fun that would be great with eighty thousand spectators in the grandstand yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> would be really to Po as well Po Po would be amazing <laughs> yeah Po would be good but yeah. I, I would love to see like a road course track because you know we we were discussing with the people of monaco uh when i was doing daytona in 216 with joe bellish from nascar and then some other people from nascar we were discussing to get it into monaco so still there's hope there's some opening with, with, with a reference like jack jack you push it and then we go to monaco eh? that would be great yeah that would be fun but if not yeah Poe would be another fun track no overtaking but oh ama yeah amazing to drive yeah um then there's a question from christoph he's asking uh jack what's the most difficult a super speedway race and a nascar or super speedway race in a in a indy car uh in the indy car because the, the the level of danger is so much higher um you have a car that will not absorb the, the wall you're going at crazy speed and you cannot lean on each other like you can in the nascar um so yeah it's it's a lot more tense the the, the speedway in nascar was difficult is you're three wide bumper to bumper and you don't see anything you're just part of a river and you're following the flow and your spotter is telling you everything in the indy car it's more yourself driving the mirrors and positioning yourself and you know that if you bite the wall it will be very painful uh, 
And uh, I see another question popping up, which is pretty similar to this. Uh, do you think uh, Lausitz Ring would be a good track for our championship? It's, it's, a, it's a fast speedway. I raced an IndyCar there. Yeah? Yeah, in 2003, yeah. What was it the year that there was the accident with Zanardi? No, that was the year when we, we finished the laps with, the, with uh, I think it was, it was two years after his accident. Yeah. And he finished, uh, he, did, he did 10 or 12 laps before, before our race to finish the things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, was, it was fun there. It was really fun there. I think, I think it could be a good race for, for but it's fast, huh? Yeah, it's really fast. You know, yeah. I, would, I think it, it would, we have to try it, at least test the cars over there and see how they do. But, uh, sorry? Track still exists as an oval? The full track still exists? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. I think so. Well, we would need to change gear ratios. So if not, we'd yeah. be on the the whole lap. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, then uh, for both of you, Andre is asking uh, best racing memory. I think Jag already said a bit with uh, with uh, the two races that he said. Patrick, what's your best racing memory? Yeah, my best racing. I I, I said it was it was Le Petit Le Mans in in, in two thousand one, but. Uh, it was. It was. I, I really enjoy ra racing with that uh, Audi car R8. It was. I was. I was doing a lot of testing in F1 at that year. It was. It was. I think I did, in 2001 I did around, you know, 10,000 kilometers during the year in F1. But I had so much fun in this in this car. It was light for 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 uh, for LMP1. It was very fast, very interesting, and I really enjoyed my 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 races with with Stefan Johansson at that time, and we won the championship. And it was it was it was a really 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 fun race, really. Okay. Fun. Yeah. I, I'd I'd like to add uh, racing memory doesn't mean that it's something we raced in. So I would take uh, the seventy nine Dijon race with my dad and Arnoux when they were banging wheels in the Formula One car. That 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 remains a, an amazing. But memory. you see it popping up on social yeah. media all the yeah. time. I think I saw it ten times in my life already. It's such a fun track, and uh, and then the race is amazing. Uh, yeah. How long it took, and that they. Both didn't go off. That they just and they didn't break the car either, which is amazing. Uh, and they yeah. got punished after for being too crazy. It's amazing. No. <laughs> yes. yeah, but they were still the real race drivers. Eh? Then yeah. it was less politics because that's the next question I get. How did you handle the politics in F one? You don't. You don't have to handle them. You just uh, mind your own business. They're, they're present. They're forever present. Uh, if you start playing the political game, then at some point you forget where you are, what you say, uh, which game you're playing. Um, so I don't know. I've always spoken my mind. Uh, it's, uh, it got some people upset, but then some other people liked it. Um, it, it the, the problem is when you speak your mind, there's often a big price to pay, but you have to be conscious, conscious of it. Uh, and in the, in the long run, it's, it's, you're better off this way because you don't backpedal. You don't uh, start lying over yourself either. Uh Next one, uh, that's from Johnny. And uh, what's the best race car you ever drove? Um, well, that doesn't necessarily mean the quickest. The best one, obviously, was the Williams 97 because it did everything I wanted it to do. The car was designed around me. So I would just sit in it and it, was, it became part of my body. It was just an extension in between me and the road. And, and that makes driving fun. Obviously... The cars I drove after that were a lot faster. The last, the last year we had the V8 uh, in F1, the G-forces were pulling uh, in Malaysia in the high-speed corners. At the end of the corners, my eyes would go black. I wouldn't see the road anymore because there was just too much G-force. So that, that made it fun as well. But the car was not nice to drive. So what you want is a car that does everything you want, basically. Then it, you don't have to think about it. Yeah, well... There's nothing better than a, than a Formula One with low fuel and new tires. You know, the, the, the two laps that you have there, it's just, just unbelievable. And you, you, cannot, you cannot compare that to, to anything. But for really racing, I think the, the Audi R8 was, was something in a, unbelievable. Yeah, they won also many races. Eh? They, they were so strong. And, and those, in that era, nobody yeah, was uh, catching. It was fun, fun racing because yeah. it was fast, it was light, super braking. Gearbox was good. Um, no, it was a super car, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, the, the questions keep popping up. We're going to do two more, and then we, we're going to do the next stage. Uh, the arrow screens in, uh, in IndyCar. What do you think about that, guys? 
Mm, I don't know. Uh, it looks better than, than the Halo, obviously. But is it still an open wheel car, really, when you don't see the helmet anymore? It's you could almost go to a Le Mans car now. It's almost that. So um, I, I'm not sure. Yes, it's safer. But is it uh, what we want? I, I don't know. I, it's, it's hard. I only saw a few, a few laps uh, uh, of it racing. On the speedway, they still look good. Um, no, no. Uh, difficult. Difficult. Because now you're not allowed to say anything that's against safety. So <laughs> you have to be careful with that. <laughs> We yeah. were all in the beginning. We were all complaining about the Hans system. Uh, everybody was. I don't want to drive with that, and now everybody's driving it. Yeah, I can't imagine driving without the hands. So, uh, mm. uh, actually, the hands. I find it it holds the belts better. So I'm I'm quite happy with it. But yeah, I was extremely against it before <laughs> before it came. It's true. Yeah, I remember. I was I was trying the the first hands model and in, in Formula One because just before it came up, and it was a. You know, it was it was horrible. It was, I couldn't drive with it with the hands. It was like terrible. But now, it, you know, now, now it's better. The, the, the seats are better than everything you do. But I, I remember the first first few days I had with with the hands. It was terrible. But you know, safety. Exactly. And the last one we're going to handle is uh, uh, about Le Mans. You know, Le Mans is going to change a lot with the supercars or the hypercars coming up. Is that something for you as drivers or is it something for you as a team with, with your feet racing team where you want to be uh, in the future? Oof, the hypercars, you know, that's for constructors, basically. Uh, the budgets will be enormous, uh, but that, that's always been the case for, for the teams that win in Le Mans. So th there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we don't know what the rules exactly will be, I guess, but hypercar means going the same way as GT. Uh, with the balance of power. I mean, if a, car, if a car is too quick, you take some horsepower away or you take some downforce away. So it, there will always be a political game of teams pushing to get more power. To And then the winner will not necessarily be the best car, but the ones who will be able to politically get the most advantage. And th that's something that I find a little bit disturbing in uh, in sports. And uh, as a driver, would you would you go as a driver if you get the opportunity? Well, I, I still need to win Le Mans, so uh, <laughs> somehow you know I still have plenty of years ahead of me. Uh, because the last year I did it, finishing second. The same thing. It was a race we should have won, and we managed to lose it, and that's very frustrating because that's the only thing that uh, that I'm missing uh, right now. Uh, you know, after having won the Indy 500, the F1 Championship, and Le Mans. Is uh, the next thing for for the, for the triple crown? Right. And Patrick, you want to go back to Le Mans, I guess, right? I that's why I'm driving this year. I want to I want to make sure that I'm 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 fit for Le Mans. No, I don't know. I don't know if uh, if if we have a, a project and he can, you know, I want I want Jack win Le Mans. I want I want he deserves to win everything on the planet. So he's he's, he's almost there. So if the opportunity is there to for us as a, as a team as a, whatever we can organize this for Jacques to win Le Mans, uh, yes, we we will go for sure. As a driver, I don't know, you know, it depends of if I'm, you know, I'm fast enough or if I want to do it or if it's a good, you know, team team setup and driver setup. But for for Jacques, he needs to win it. So let's see. You see, Jacques, there's no pressure. You need to win it. That's that's. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you do your best, you know, when, when there's no pressure. <laughs> it's good. It's good under pressure. That's why. <laughs> okay. I go to my short questions because uh, we already went over time. Uh, short question. Hamilton or Verstappen? Jack. For um, what? Just the, have to say a name. What you prefer. For dinner, for, uh, to go skiing, <laughs> for, for what? <laughs> as a driver, as a race driver. Hamilton. Well, you, you have to take Hamilton because he's been winning. Uh, he's been winning uh, everything uh, over the years. Uh, Verstappen has been very impressive. He's been improving. He's been maturing a lot. So he could be ending up winning a lot of races and championship. But he's not there yet. Uh, but I see more more Verstappen leaning towards you, being like uh, a bit of. Uh... The outsider in Formula One, then then Hamilton is in ni nicely brushed and everything is uh, perfect. Well, you know what? They both are in the perfect team for them. Yeah. Mercedes with Lewis is perfect. It's all clean. It's all about uh, that kind of, of image. Uh, where if you if you take uh, Max with Red Bull, 
uh, Red Bull gave him the opportunity to be crazy, uh, to crash a lot in the first year and to stay there, to learn. Uh, so they, they, they are both in their perfect teams. Take him out of these teams and environments, they might perform less. Uh, next one, Formula One or NASCAR? NASCAR, for now. Yeah, at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of the modern F1 the hybrid engines and all the technology and the politically correct. So I would, yeah, yeah lean towards NASCAR. Go to NASCAR. Then uh, I hope your wives are not around. Romantic weekend or race weekend? Race weekend. <laughs> Romantic. Romantic. <laughs> you see, Jack will get a problem with his wife, and you will you will be the nice guy tonight. So you get you get nice meal tonight. Perfect. Exactly. I want to, you know, no, because I just want wanted to. What we don't get. That's the thing. <laughs> I just I just wanted to get you in problems. It was Alan Day who yeah. said you have he's, to. He's ask listening. Him, he's listening. So I'm careful. <laughs> Best teammate ever. Jack. <laughs> so yeah, we we'll always one race together. That's so why. We'll... That's why. <laughs> Yeah, but you still you say Patrick Jack? Yeah, oh, yeah it was easy. That's uh, what I'm racing. The F1 years I to because be his teammate. Big year. Did I have a good teammate? Yeah, Olivier Panis was was, was nice. Was good. We could work well together. Um, but apart from that, there, there was always high competition, which is good. Yeah. You know, it pushes you forward. You need high com competition. Uh, now, now with Patrick, it, it's fun because. I've hardly ever had drivers who could drive my setup or we could share setups, even in F1 or through the years. And and, and Patrick is one of them. So that, that allows us to work better on the NASCAR. Okay. And then the last one, worst teammate ever. All of them. Uh, <laughs> I have to come up with a name. Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, there isn't someone I didn't really get along Tom Coronel <laughs> <laughs> well actually you know there's one guy but he wasn't a teammate he was our test driver and we had we had a fist fight during a driver's briefer late years later was which was Montoya but once in NASCAR he became very nice <laughs> yeah he's not an easy guy I think yeah no cool man uh, or, or guys uh, just to sum up uh, 220 season has, has started off uh, I think Jack your goal is to to, to win the championship but for both of you, who do you think are among the favorites together with you guys to win the championship? Well, you have Heisman, obviously. He won it last year. And we saw in, uh, uh, in the last race for qualifying, he was super quick. Then he, he was chewing up his tires. So he, he was just going slower and slower. And obviously, Alan, Alan Day, because he's, he's always been uh, running at the front. Um, so he, he is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, the only issue is I'm not sure I can do all the races this, this you know, because the, with the F1 schedule and it's becoming a little bit complicated and we might have snow in most. So that could be interesting. <laughs> did you have a race in the snow? Uh, yeah, I did some ice racing in France. Uh, for oh, yeah. that, that was a lot of fun, but the NASCAR in the snow, I'm not so sure. But I, I, won, I won in most with the Audi, so I have an advantage. Oh, yeah, you see, he's fast there, so you have to come there. I did a Formula Renault. My first Formula Renault test was a Nürburgring in the snow. So, hey, if, if we can do it with a Formula Renault, you can do it with a NASCAR. Oh, yeah. No worries. No. Hey, best of luck, guys. Thanks for being here. Uh, congratulations with the team. Uh, you, you guys look amazing, and, and, and you bring a lot for NASCAR. So, uh, best of luck, and uh, see you in Zolder. Thank you. See you there. Bye. Thanks. Bye.